ready to get on the hot seat with Wally George? Hang on for the wildest, most controversial talk show on television, featuring enthusiastic participation from our live studio audience and interviews with provocative newsmaker guests. And now, here he is, that hard-hitting, award-winning, conservative voice of television, Wally George! us across this great country, Woo! New York, San Francisco, Chicago, wherever you're watching, Dallas, Texas, wherever you are, I'm Wally George, and I'm here to make sure that the United States of America remains number one! Thank Channel America for giving us the chance to come into all the major, all the major cities of all, of all of our states across this country because we are. I'm the one talk show host standing up for what's right and decent and patriotic. I'm the one. I'm the one talk show host who's not ashamed to say this is one nation under God. And we're here every week at this time, so if you're watching us for the first or second or third time, tell your friends to tune on Channel America every week. We're on this ch channel every week at this very same time for a whole hour. Now, on tonight's show, I have some ludicrous maniacs on the hot seat. Now, we have this one nitwit who is, who is, is probably... As, He's as bad, I think, almost as Charles Manson. <laughs> Not funny. He has, a, he has a cult called the religion of drugs. And he says, he's coming on my show, he says that he has proof that Nancy and Ronnie Reagan did smoke pot. Oh. Tell you, I'm gonna kick his buns out of the country. Yeah! Yeah! And then we have a guy named Rick Schooler who has a, an organization called Hate, H A T E, Humans Against Television Evangelists. And, and he's also against religion in general. He, he's an atheist and he says religion is rotten. Oh, come on. And finally, I can hardly wait to get to, to, to this, this last guy, Warren Meyer. He's known as the junk mail king, and he's proud of the fact that he sends out more junk mail than anybody in America. I say junk mail it is something none of us want, and I want to see junk mail outlawed. Now, before we get into my... Hey, thank you for your, for your great signs. Take a shot of some... Hold your signs up there, guys. Get a shot of those signs up there. Yeah, that's great. Great signs. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, hold it down. Now, before I, I do my... Hold it, guys, in the audience, please. Quiet, please. Before I do my, my opening commentary, it's time to introduce my great crew. And in the, in the booth, our fine director, let's hear a nice hand for Jeff Bingham, everybody. All right, Jeff. 
let's have a let's have a big cheer for my producer, my beautiful wife, Janice George. All right, all right. Now let's all settle down here in the audience, please. Quiet down. And, and wherever you are at, at home or wherever you're watching, pay attention. It's time for my commentary of the night. Well, the Reagan bashing continues. <laughs> Lunatic liberals like Kitty Kelly. Oh. <laughs> Lunatics like Kitty Kelly will not be content until they have destroyed the images of our former president, Ronald Reagan and Nancy Reagan. The Kitty Kelly book, as we talked about last week, is so disgusting, it's full of trashy innuendos, and I say it should be labeled fiction. What do you think? And now, and now we have another anti-Reagan book. This time it's about former President Ronald Reagan, and it's written by some idiot named Lou Cannon, a journalist, and it's full of scandalous smears against former President Reagan. It's a hatchet job all the way. Once again, in this new book, former President Reagan is portrayed as a doddering, silly, stupid old man who really didn't know what he was doing when he was in the White House. I say, how much more of this garbage do we we have to take, right? I say, I say the vast majority of American people know that Ronald Reagan was a dedicated, inspiring president. He made us all proud to be Americans again during his eight years in office. Yeah. Who can forget his liberation of Grenada? Uh, who can forget the strikes on Libya, where, which stopped the tyrant Muammar Gaddafi in his tracks? Yeah. The opening up of a dialogue with Gorbachev and that famous summit meeting where President Reagan showed Gorbachev he could not push play. us around. Yeah. During the Reagan years, Ronald Reagan stood for morality, decency, dignity, law and order, and a devotion to God and country. He earned, he earned the love and respect of his fellow countrymen. And these yellow, dirty journalists are trying to destroy the former president and first lady with outrageous smears. Well, I say the people in this country aren't going to buy it. I'll be right back. Welcome back to Hot Seat, the only program on television that has guts! Yeah! Whoever's speaking out in the audience, that's the last time you're going to do it, because you're going to be gone if you do it again, okay? Out of here! Okay. All right. Okay, now hold it down, the audience. We're going to uh, continue now by, by introducing my first ludicrous guest. Yeah. Uh, He has a cult, never mind. He has a cult, uh, a stupid cult like Charles Manson called the Religion of Drugs. Here is this stupid idiot, the Reverend Bud Green. Let me tell you, uh, I mean, you can't tell because he's pretty close. He smells as bad as he looks. Hey, Wally. Oh, oh. Wally, what you smell is the skunk bud. The skunk bud. I don't think this, this guy has had a bath in about a year. What do you think? You have, a, you have a cult called the religion of drugs. And tell me the truth. Hey, give me a close-up of this guy. Tell me the truth. Doesn't he remind you of Charles Manson? Huh? 
Now, you have a cult called the religion of drugs, uh, and, and you, all, you all smoke pot and... and, and, and <laughs> hey, hey, I'll sign you up out in the alley in a minute, pal. <laughs> What do you do in this in this religion of drugs, Norm? Well, I'll tell you what we but, do is we use marijuana to worship God because... Oh, God! Oh. Hey, Wally, Wally, it says it in the Bible, Genesis 1.29, and God said, ye shall partake of every herb-bearing seed. Oh, come on! Are you trying... Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me that Jesus advocated smoking pot? No. No, you got it. Wally, well, he didn't advocate it. He did it. Oh! No, wait. You're, wait, wait. You're not... Wait, wait. You're not going to sit here on this stage and tell me that you think Jesus smoked pot. Well, not only that, he took peyote because they call peyote... Let me tell you why. The Indians call peyote the flesh of Christ. He wasn't giving his followers a piece of bread or a wafer. He was giving them peyote. Oh! You know what? You are, you are the most sickening, the most sickening, the most blasphemous idiot I've ever heard in my life! And hey, Wally. Come, come in front... Hey, coming from a pagan like you, I'll take that as a compliment. Oh, okay. uh, hey, I am not a pagan. I am an average, God-loving American. And I'll tell you, I'm sure God looks down from heaven with disgust on this creature. I tell you what, Wally, if God didn't want us to smoke marijuana, why'd he put it here? Yeah! Hey, oh, wait a minute. God put, put a lot of things on earth to tempt us, but those of us who have decency are not tempted, right? Yeah. And you know what? Speaking of being tempted, I'm tempted to break your stupid nose! What really bothers me, Norm, about you and your religion of drugs is you're hanging out uh, on school campuses trying to enroll teenagers into your religion of drugs, giving out free uh, uh, joints to kids. And Whoa. I think that's... But, Wait a I second. Think, I say... I say this guy is trying to enroll the young people of America into his sickness, and I think he should be thrown in jail. What do you think? Hey, hold on, man. I will. What we wait, do? Wait, 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 right. I will not rest. I will not rest until we, till we close down your religion of, of drugs and, and put you in the same cell with Charles Manson. Yeah. When they make a lovely couple, maybe they get married or something. Who knows? Let me tell you, Wally, what we do. All right, hold on. Hold it. All right, hold, it. Shh, hold it. What we do is we have a rock band called Just Say Yes. Now, at the concerts, oh, I do throw yes. marijuana to the crowd, but it's a sacrament. I'm giving my followers the holy sacrament of God. I have the right to do that. Yeah, you have the right. But I'll tell you, uh, just because you do, you do have the right here in the United States of America does not mean it is right. And I say, I think you should be stopped in your track. Yeah. Now, you know what? Let me tell, Wally, let me tell all the people around this country, let me tell all the people in America, we play college campuses, so it won't be too much longer before the Reverend Bud Green and Just Say Yes is at a college near you. Okay. Let me say this. Okay. Let me, let me say this to college students who are watching us all across America. When you, when you see the Reverend Bud Green is advertised that he's coming to your campus, do me a favor, don't show up, right? Yeah. Now, 
You have smoked a lot of pot in your day. What else, what else do you take besides uh, marijuana? Okay, we do magic mushrooms. We do peyote. Peyote and magic yeah. mushrooms. And we do vitamin L. Vitamin L, which is? That's uh, LSD because you need oh. your... You know why, Wallet? Because you need your daily recommended allowance. Oh, boy. All right, Jeff, give me another close-up of, of this guy. Give me a close-up of, uh, of this guy's head. Take a look. Take a look at his... Hey, hold on, guys. Hey, take a look at his eyes. Isn't it obvious? Hey, 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 this guy's brain is fried! I can see it in your eyes, bud. How many... Hold on. How many joints... How many joints have you smoked today? I've worshipped two or three times. Oh... Worship two or three times. And Wally, I'll tell you, as I told Joan Rivers and Sally Jesse Raphael, you can never worship God too many times. Oh boy. You are you are really a disgusting, a vile rodent, don't you think so? Now, are you a bona fide minister? I am. I was ordained by God during an LSD. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, a minute. wait, wait. During an LSD trip, God came to me and said, I want you to spread the word that we need to smoke marijuana to see that we need to overthrow corrupt rich pigs. During like an you. LSD trip? Yep. During an LSD trip. That's right. Hey, hey, that was Hey, that wasn't God speaking to you, you stupid nitwit. <laughs> It was probably Timothy Leary. Yeah. I say you and your group are satanic, and I would say No way, we worship God, Wally, because oh, God is marijuana. No, you don't. You know what, Wally? I say Wally, you're the antichrist. You have, no way. I say you're the antichrist. Have you ever seen the killer buds, the killer green buds that smell like God? You wouldn't say that. Oh, gee. You know, let me oh, let me tell you this. You say smoking uh, smoking joints and all that kind of stuff, it, it doesn't do anything any harm to you having LSD trips. That's good to you. Yeah, I, no, no, I, I have I have news for you. It has been proven, a proven fact. I read in Newsweek a whole article on this where they proved that straight A students in colleges across America who are getting straight A's all of a sudden flunked out in their second and third years because they were getting into heavy doses of marijuana. I'll be right back. We're back. Welcome back to Hot Seat. Uh, no, it's okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what. We are back. We are back, and we have this idiot, uh, the Reverend Bud Green here. From the religion of drugs, and he has a band called Just Say Yes. Can you believe that? Now, I understand, Reverend, uh, that, that you... You, you, you told me backstage, and I, I've heard around, that you have inside information where you know that Nancy Reagan did indeed smoke pot. Oh, come on. Now, now how, how can you walk around? Well, what kind of information I'll do you have? i tell you what we have, Wally. One of the members of our re religion was at that pot party that Kitty Kelly talked about. Oh. Not only did they smoke pot, but they said that Nancy Reagan just kept on hitting it and hitting it. Oh. And hitting it. Now, you're saying... One of the members of your religion was at the same party with Nancy Reagan? That's right, because I have spies. Can you well. believe anybody... Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Wait. Can you believe anybody associated with him would be invited to a party with Nancy Reagan? Well, you know why? You know why they were invited, Wally? They're the guys who brought the marijuana. Oh, come on. <laughs> You can't, you see, it's people like you, scumbags like you, who are trying to drag decent, uh, honest, uh, wonderful people like Ronald and Nancy Reagan down into the gutter with you. And I'll tell you what, Norm, uh, or Bud. Reverend Bud. Reverend Bud. Do you know why, do you know why he's doing what he's doing? Because he is a loser. That's why. You see. 
bud. Good day, bud. No, no, Wally, you got that wrong because anybody with the killer green like I have is a winner. No, no way. You see, people like you try to be successes in life. You try to get a career going and you fail and, and you can't make anything of yourself. So what do you do? You turn to drugs and, and you roll in the gutter with a bunch of scum because you don't know how to be a winner. And I say people like you are a disgrace to the decent people of America! Hey, Wally. Wally, will you, let me tell people one thing here. We don't only advocate marijuana, we also advocate non-violent revolution because when you smoke the marijuana, you see how corrupt the rich pigs that are that control this country. Wow. Look at George Adolph Bush. He's already oh, had two wars. On. He's already had two wars. He's ready to sacrifice you for war number three. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hey, what about that, that, that war? We won that war in 100 hours of fighting. Yeah, yeah, Wally. Wait, 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 we won it, all right. We killed two hundred thousand women and children. We won it, all right. Hold on. If if it hadn't been for for George Bush, we would have lost several thousand Americans. And thank God for George Bush because we had practically no casualties yeah. at all. Yeah. And you know what? It was people like it, it was people like the Reverend Bud Green who were predicting when we went into this war. I had you on the show when the war started, and he, I wish I could play you the tape back, he predicted this was going to be another Vietnam that was going to go on for years, and he predicted that we'd be bringing back thousands of American soldiers in body bags. Well, obviously, he didn't know what in the hell he was talking about. Hey, Wally, Wally. Just because these women and children were from Iraq doesn't make their lives any less valuable. Hey, we did we did what we had to do. We stopped that rodent tyrant in his tracks. That's what we were there for. Wait a second, George Bush is still in power. Oh god. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me that you think we should not have gone into Libya? That we should not have tried to stop this horrifying dictator? Well, it was Iraq for one thing. Oh. <laughs> well, all right, Iraq. Okay. All right. Well, let me tell you, you know Lib what? Libya and Iraq. Well, let me tell you something. If George Bush and Saddam Hussein had been able to smoke herb and talk this problem out, we wouldn't have had to have a war. Oh. I, sa I say... You, you probably support Saddam Hussein. Well, I'll tell you what, he's no worse than George Bush. Oh, I... He only killed 2,000 people. We killed 200,000 people. So no. what's, the, uh, what's the thing there? Who's worse, Wally? I'll tell you. Uh, George Bush is a fine, dedicated leader. He, he's a war hero. In, war monger. A, a war hero in World War II. Uh, he was a hero in World War II. He has served his country well. Tell me one thing that you have done that is good for your country. Tell I'll me tell you one thing. Good. I'm advocating another American revolution to overthrow the tyrants that are controlling oh, this country. Oh, really great. Hey, hey, Thomas... Thomas Jefferson, one of our own forefathers, said we should have a revolution every 20 years to get rid of the corrupt rich pigs. Yo, yeah, he never said that. He you did. know he didn't. He did. All right, let's go to the audience and bring up some, bring up some people. Yes, yes. Can, can I have your name and your question? Yes, go ahead. Yes, my name's Virginia, and I just want to ask this scumbag here. Yeah. How many people? Yeah. How many people is in his group? What's that? I didn't hear. What's that again? How many people's in his group? His cult. Is what his you cult. Say. Okay, how many people? Uh, how many people? I have personally worshipped with over ten thousand people in this country. Oh. Oh no. Okay. Oh, give me, give me your personal opinion of, of this guy. I think he should be locked up and throw away the key. That's what yeah. I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hi. My name's Cedar Bra. Yes, sir. And my my bigger brother was 21, and he just got drafted into the pros for football. He was all American and everything. And one night he was at a party, and a joint got laced with LSD and everything, and he freaked out and had a massive heart attack. And he had <laughs> your card, man. You killed my brother. He, I hate I your guts. I hope you died of a massive heart attack. I hate you. Yeah. You see, that'll 
buy that. That's the kind of thing that can happen. No, it was probably laced with PCP, which is a devil worship drug. No, the, hey, I'm glad you, you told that story because that sends the message across that that's the kind of thing that happens, right? No. Yeah. Okay, yes, yes. Go ahead, yes. Well, sir, I would like to know. Shh, shh, quiet. Sir, I would like to know how you can base a whole religion on just one scripture from the Bible. Well, there's another one, uh, Psalms 104:14, and God gave herb for the service of man. I think, I think, I think you should cut your hair and get a nine to five job and go live with mom. Yeah. Back, back, back. I have a question right. for I want to know how this loser makes his money besides uh, robbing from everybody else. Yeah, how do you make make your money? I'll tell you what. Good, good question. How, how do you make how do you make a living? Well, we have the band, but I tell you what, all the money we get, we use it to procure more marijuana. Yeah. Uh, good for you, pal. Good job. Okay. Hey, bud. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. I have had all I can take from you. Yeah. Hold on a second, Wally. Before I go, I want to introduce two of my secret members of the religion. Come on out here. What is this? What do you got? What do you got? Peace. Oh. Oh. As you can see. And let me tell you right now, the Lord has given me the holy green to worship. Oh, no. Welcome back to Hot Seat. Boy, I'll tell you, this, this place smells a lot better since he's gone. What do you think? Yeah! Hey, that guy doesn't belong in jail. He belongs in a padded cell. What do you think? Yeah! Now, we're going we're gonna to continue with, with our next victim on the hot seat in a moment. Uh, welcome one, once again to Hot Seat all across America. Welcome to Channel America. We're proud to be a part of this great American network, Channel America, as we reach into some 30 million homes all across America. Now, before we get into our to this next debate, uh, let me r remind you people, wherever you're watching us, let, let's put the address up on the, on the screen. Write to me. Uh, this is the address, wherever you are. Maybe you'd like to be on the, on the hot seat with me. It, wherever you are around the country, if you, if you want to challenge me on some particular issue, you write to me. You must be 18 years of age or older. Tell me what you want to argue with me about, and maybe we'll invite you to come out here to Los Angeles and debate me on the hot seat, okay? And if you'd like a free autographed picture, I'll be glad to mail one out to you, personally autographed to you. We'll put you on our mailing list and uh, all that kind of stuff. And we'll be sending out all kinds of newsletters and stuff. So write to us, Wally George, Box 787, Hollywood, California, 90078, Wally George, P.O. Box 787, Hollywood, 90078. I do read all the letters we get. We answer them all as soon as possible. So let me hear from you. And I want to know where where you're you're watching us across America. You see, we've just been on the air now uh, on Channel America for a few weeks. So I want to know where we're where our viewers are. So do write me a letter so we can see. And we're all going to very soon. We we'll, we may be coming to your city and do a show, a hot seat sh a show live from your city, wherever you are in America. <laughs> If you're going to be visiting out here in Southern California, if you live here in Los Angeles, or if you're going to be visiting out here and you'd like to come down for a taping of my show, we'll put the phone numbers up. These are the numbers here in Southern California where you can call and reserve your free hot seat hot seat tickets. Okay? Now, uh, in the 213 area code, it's 464-6111. <laughs> 
Don't call now. Call during business hours any day, Monday through Friday. In the Get ready for the big one now, gang. In the 714 area code, it's 999. <laughs> Five thousand. Okay. All right. Now we're holding down the orange, please. It's time to, to, to introduce this uh, horrifying creature. He's the head of an organization called Hate, H A T E, Humans Against Television Evangelists. And he, and he, yeah. He's against. He's against religion in general. This stupid moron. Here he is trying to at attack religion in America, Rick Schooler. Yeah! Thank you. Thank you very much. Wally? Nothing. Wait a minute. In celebration of your new syndication, we would like to make you an honorary hate I member. Oh, there we go. Wear this in pride. Wear this in pride. Hey, you know, hey, look at this. Hey. Wear it everywhere you go. Hey, hey, let me tell you, I am so thrilled to have this. Get out of here. Your organization may be filled with hate, but ours is filled with love. Wally, Wally, I'd like to tell you what you're full of, but I, I don't think it would get all over the air. Oh, I know. We all know what you're full of, all the way to your stupid eyeballs. What do you think? Now, look, if, uh, look at, the, at this audience, I would say probably none of them have ever been to church in their life. Now, you know what? Oh, hold, hold. Which is good. Which is hold, good. Hold you are trying to say, you are you are trying to say the organized religion in America is, is going no good. To, no, it's not. It's going to be the downfall of this nation is what it's going to be. If you look back through history, organized religion has done nothing but cause war and kill people and cause prejudice. It has done nothing to help people. I, I have news for you. This, our founding fathers, were, were when they founded this great nation of ours, it was with a love of, of God. No, wasn't it? It was to evade taxes. Of no, hold on. It was a vague Our taxes. founding fathers knew this was one nation under God. Yeah. No, this is... This is true that we are one nation under God, but we are not one nation ruled by God, and that's what the churches want to do. That's what people like you want to do. The that's... churches don't want to do it. But what I do you mean the you, churches pal? don't want to do it? They're are trying you... to take over this damn nation. The... They are. What churches are? We have we have a nation full of weak people that cannot support themselves mentally, so they have to go to church. Oh, that's what it is. And this. Let me you know, tell you something. Let me, let me tell you something. I don't need anybody telling me what I need to believe in or shouldn't believe in or what I can do or what I can't do. You know? I'm not telling you what to do. I'm saying do whatever you like. But you don't need a preacher or a priest to say you've sinned. I say... Because you're all guilty. We're all guilty of sin. I, I, I cannot believe... Hold, hold it. I cannot believe that, that you can put down the great churches in this country Oh, the great that are churches. preaching the word of God across uh, America. No, no, no. What they are doing, what they are doing is bilking the public out of millions of dollars so they can buy up the land and so they can get support in the White House so that they can get laws so that we outlaw marijuana, outlaw illicit sex, outlaw pornography, freedoms that we should have. So what we, hold on, Rick. So what would you do, Schooler? Would you close down all the churches in the United States of America? In, I would change them into 7-Elevens because we need more 7-Elevens. Change them into... So you... Well, wait. So what you're calling for is the closing down... Hold it. Hold it, guys. The abolishment... Hold it. Quiet, quiet down. What I'm calling for... What I'm calling for is the abolishment of all organized religion in this nation. Well, then, what you're calling for is the killing of God in America, and you're not going to get away no, with no, no, it. No, no, no. I'll be right back.
Thank you very much. Welcome back all across America to Hot Seat. I'm Wally George, and we have this ludicrous idiot, uh, Rick Schooler, is here. Now you are. Now you are. Your audience agrees with me. You know. No, they. Hey, how many of you think he's a jerk? Yeah. There's your audience who agrees with you. Yeah. I thought you said they agree with you, Rick. Obviously, obviously, they're brainwashed. You know, no, they're not. Nations. You see, because this is a Christian nation based you on Judeo-Christian values. Do you think it's a Christian nation? Yeah. Now, now, are you saying it's not a Christian nation? Of course it's not. Take a look at your audience. You can tell it's not a Christian nation. Hey. Do you know why? Do you know why? Hold it's a bunch of malarkey. Do you know, hold it. Wait a minute. Hold that. The only reason people go to church is so that they can show off their new car and the new dress they got or whatever, you know? Yeah. Keeping up with the Joneses. Hey, what? Hey. And then the churches go around, they bilk all the money, and they don't pay taxes. We do. Hey, why don't you? Hey, Let's tax why the don't churches. You go to, hey, why don't you go to church next Sunday, Rick, and show off your new nose? Yeah. Hey. Yeah, well. You should have seen. Hey, you. You should have seen his old one before he had it fixed. But I'm telling you, Rick. Well, well, at least, Wally, you could mail your hair in, you know. Oh, that's cute. cute. You see, let me tell you. You see, let me give you... I have facts here. Let me give you the facts, Rick. You see, this is a Christian nation based on Judeo-Christian values because in a recent sur- wait a minute, don't say no. In a recent survey made across this nation by, by who? The seven USA Club? USA today. Eighty percent, eighty percent of the Americans poll identify themselves as Christians oh. with a strong belief in God. Yeah, yeah. And as they were, and as they were doing that, they were smoking a joint and having. <laughs> the only, the, the only people, the only people that need church are people that can't get their head together on their own. You only they need somebody else to tell them what to do. I only, you know. I only I feel very sorry for Re- organi- hold on. Wait, wait, organized wait. religion comes in a close organized religion comes in a close second after organized crime as far as the corruption of this country. Oh, you know, this you, country. you are so sick. You are so sick. It is. The, the average person in, in, in my audience, the average person here in the studio and all across America, they know an IQ of about they know four. they know oh. they know hold it. They know down deep in their hearts that there is a God, and that's why and this it, and is... And his name's Wally George, Oh, right? get out of here. Don't be... There is... You see, there, you, there is no proof of God. It was written by a bunch of drunks thousands of years ago, about 80, 80 million different authors in that. Who knows what really happened? We don't know. Oh, yes, we, we do. We base our belief oh, on a yes, bunch of hearsay. Do. On a bunch of hearsay. That's all it is. I, I read the Bible, and I trust the word of God, certainly while I do yeah. a punk like you. Yeah. Now, you want to... You, I want to go ahead, and, and you say now that we should tax churches of across course, America. Of course, if they're going to be big businesses, let's tax them. All right, now, I'm sick of paying 50% of my check, and then these uh, churches go off and pay nothing. Last time you were on my show, you were saying uh, you were against separation of church and, and state. That's right, but now the churches, they want to get in. They want to buy land. They want to promote their laws and stuff. They want to do that. Let them pay the tax. I say it is let unconstitutional. We do not tax our churches because these people, these preachers... These I don't preachers, think we should tax them they, really. I think we should close them down. Oh! Hey, wait, wait a minute. Close them down. No, no. Wait a minute. I have, I have news for, for this punk. We're not going to close our churches down. I'm closing him down.
Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. We'll get to our next guest in a moment. First, let me remind you people here in Southern California only, join us on the air every day, 3.30 to 4, on, on whatever channel you're, you're watching us for Hot Seat Highlights, Monday through Friday at 3.30, only in Southern California. Okay? Thank you very much. Now, <coughs> we get to a, to a guy who calls himself the Junk Mail King. <laughs> His name is Warren Meyer. Let's hear it for Warren. Uh, now, Warren. Hey, you sit there with a smile on your face. I'll wipe that smile off pretty quick. Now, let me tell you. you call yourself the junk mail king. Let me tell you, most of us hate junk mail. Now, Warren. Why are you so proud of, of being the junk mail king? What is good about junk mail? Give me one thing that's good about junk mail in America. So everybody out there can get their pizza coupons. Oh, come on. Hey, wait a minute. Now, take a look at him. I think he's had a few many two pizza coupons. tell you this when I go to, hey when I go to my post office box when I go to my mailbox and I know you guys feel the same way I am sick and tired of having my mailbox filled with this stupid junk mail yeah. I say it's a disgrace and you make you're a millionaire be, because of junk mail you should be ashamed of yourself shouldn't he yeah. There is no, the average American, the average American world does not like junk mail. We want to see it outlawed, don't we? Yeah! Now, how do you answer that? Well, I think that the, because of the junk mail, if you got rid of the junk mail that you're advocating, the, the postal stamp will go up to $1.25. Now, you guys oh, want, now you want the you want the stamp to go up to a... Yeah, that's absolutely true. But the, the thing is, is that what you're advocating is that you want to get rid of bulk mail, and I don't think these people out here want to pay $1.25 a stamp, do you? No, no. Wait a minute, Warren. At least we gave out time. Hey, hey, don't, don't give us your scare tactics. That would never happen, would it? No! I say, I say, there's too much of this junk mail that is coming in that is very misleading. You know, you, you got this thing. Hey, you may have already won one million dollars. <laughs> I say this is so, and, and some poor little people who, do, who don't have too much up here are going to believe it. And they, and they have you sending in for all of this junk, all this garbage. Not only that, but hey, but I have got some information for you. Yeah. It is also harmful to the environment. Did you know, did you know that? It's not actually everything is... Oh, what? Actually, it's down to a science now. They have trees that go specifically harvest to make junk mail, and they have, and they have, they have the recycled, they have the recycled paper. Paper now is recyclable, so they have it down to a science. So it's actually, it's not waste in the environment. Well, let, but what it does, one thing it, one thing it, one thing it does. Yeah, you're a ranger, Smith. Okay, hold it. Yeah, one, one, one thing it does is that it actually increases, it brings about jobs, increases uh, sales for people, and without it, I mean, basically, the economy is going to be in bad shape. Let me give you, give you some facts here out of USA Weekend just last USA week. Weekend? Last year, Americans received over 60 billion pieces of junk mail. Now, they boiled that down. They boiled that down, Warren. Wait, wait a minute. That's 230 unsolicited junk for every man, woman, and child in America. What are you yeah, reading? Yeah, over, over 60 billion pieces of bulk mail were processed last what year. What are you reading there? I don't have to read that. I, whatever I say. Hey. You don't have to read that. I know everything. You don't have to read anything. Now, you know what? I tell you right now. 
if a lot of the bulk mail, if it, if it were for guys like uh, uh, that, uh, like Reverend Bud, if these guys would just knock off their hey, and, and agree with. Your language, with pal. <laughs> And they will, hey, hey, yeah, okay. hey, hey, that word you just said is what you send out in the mail every day. <laughs> okay. If, if the guys like Reverend, Reverend Bud, if they would just agree with you, then we wouldn't have to send out pieces for like uh, uh, drug rehabilitation. People, you know, what, what soliciting uh, me, to what, get rehabilitated due to his, uh, uh, what he's brought about, what he's created. What bothers me, Warren, is, is USA Today says rivers, rivers here in America are polluted by mills that are making strictly paper for junk mail. Oh. Now this is from USA Today. Rivers are polluted strictly, strictly by mills that are are making the paper for your junk mail, and landfills, landfills are choked with debris because of junk mail. Seventy-five thousand acres of trees are destroyed annually just to make junk mail. I say, I say that's disgraceful. It's disgraceful. Now, now, how do you answer that? <laughs> yeah, I think the people who own the paper mills should take responsibility oh, for polluting sure. the water. No, 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 I'll tell you. They're making the, this paper for you. <laughs> if we want to save America, we put you out of business. <laughs> junk, mail, junk mail is now always has been a, a disgrace. We don't want it. We don't need it. We, we don't need him either. You're out of here. Okay, now, now uh, about how much time we got here, pal? That's all the time we got for tonight. I'll see you next week. God bless you all. Have a great week. Bye bye, everybody. Smells like a gym bag. Does anyone else feel lightheaded? Oh, I'd kill for a good coma right now. I need that bed. Why? If someone were to break in here in the middle of the night wanting to murder us, they would attack this bed first. Shit's Creek, weeknights at 12.